Hellblade 2 previews are out and man are they good. However, gamers are taken aback about the revelations regarding its performance. Join us for Hellblade 2 30 frames per second lock drama. Our thoughts. This is the medicine. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Before we get into this one, though, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. All right, let's get into this one again. This one is called Hellblade 2 30 frames per second locked drama. Our thoughts. Man, um, this is a rant because um, I, I don't need no notes for this. This is to piggyback off the conversation we just had yesterday in regards to the revelation that 30 frames per second games um, are becoming more and more paramount than we like. Uh, but there are two things happening here. The, something that's happening here with Hellblade that speaks to, for lack of a better term, the beating over the head with the cash register the gaming industry is trying to do to its consumers and secondly, something that's just awry at Microsoft. But let's deal with the broader um, gaming community first. But before we even do that, I want to read to you the news stories and the tweets and the reactions to what's going on. So this is something that I saw from Idle Sloth out on Twitter. It says, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 will run at 30 frames per second with a dynamic resolution on Xbox Series X and S. Um, and he's quoted from GamePro.de that Hellblade 2 only runs at 30 frames per second in dynamic resolution on both Xbox Series S and Series X. There are no graphics modes. The frame rate can be increased on, uh, on the PC. The VFX director explains this is an, an interview with GamePro by saying that the experience should feel more cinematic, similar to movies that run at 24 frames per second. Now, in regards to the fallout of this, um, people are upset because they don't want to see 30 frames per second only games. They don't want to see games lack 60 frames per second modes. I get it. Um, that there's a lot of stuff being, being pumped into these games, and I get it. Unreal Engine 5 is doing a lot to make games look prettier and look more realistic than ever before. But there seems to be a real big problem that kind of like trickled over from Unreal Engine 4 that just got mutated with Unreal Engine 5. And that is just the CPU throttle and bottlenecking or whatever you want to call it that is happening via um, that engine. It's not good. Um, I feel like that before we start trying to go all out with Unreal Engine 5 on some of these games and we look at some of the stuff that we want to do and we're like, aha, that looks neat, that we got to understand that consumers paid hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for some of the hardware that they have um, to play these games at tip top performance. That's what they're expecting. So some of us are going to have to hold back some of the more crazy ambitious things that they want to do to try to balance out the performance and meet expectations because there's no worse feeling than saying hey look i bought me a 4090 card at two thousand dollars and i can barely get 35 frames per second in certain areas i'm talking to you dragon's dogma too so i, I get that unreal engine 5 is doing it, it makes a lot of crazy things capable but that engine needs to be tamed and i'm looking at you epic y'all gotta figure this stuff out um y'all need to figure this out the cpu throttle bottleneck gap whatever you want to call it needs to be curbsided and we need publishers and developers to think responsibly when they're developing these games and not just thwart the fact that people paid a lot of money to play these games at a certain performance we got to balance that out and then that's where your innovation and your ingenuity comes in you guys are going to have to figure it out and, fi and, and and come up with some type of way to release the things that you want to do without it being such a throttle to the tip top hardware i get it if these consoles can't do it but there's no excuse to where if i got a top of the line um cpu a top of the line 4090 card i'm getting 35 frames per second that's absurd 
So we got to figure this out. All right. That's the broader conversation. And we've had this. Listen to my talk on 90 frames per uh, or 30 frames per second and all other stuff on episodes of the medicine and NRO mic check and all that other stuff. But the bigger picture here is something else I want to read you guys. And this is coming from uh, someone by the name of Guabzilla on um, Twitter, which I thought was just just blaring. And, and, and it just shines a light on this whole problem altogether on the Microsoft side. He says in a tweet, the reason Hellblade 2 at 30 frames per second is a problem is they promise better. And he brings back a, a, a tweet from Aaron Greenberg that he said, um, you know, leading up to the release of the Series X and the Series S. He says 60 frames per second, Grin, Aaron Greenberg of Microsoft said, 60 frames per second will be the standard output, but the architecture allows us to support up to 120 frames per second. Now, granted, as he got corrected by the hardware crew, he came back out and said, okay, you know what? It, it really depends on the, the creative uh, desires of the development team, right? But still the innuendo was, we're gonna have a beefy, powerful machine. You're gonna get 60 frames per second, definitely from us. But if these, and if these other teams wanna do it, they'll be able to do it. And come to find out that's not what's happening. And what makes it even worse is I talked about the broader gaming community, um, you know, as far as developers using Unreal Engine 5 and there being bottlenecks in the CPU and stuff like that and and, and that, that leading to these lower frames. That's understandable for a third party publisher that's doing parallel development that's gotta take into account all of these PC components that they're gonna support and all these consoles all at the same time. I. I still think that it's it's lazy development on the optimization side because if you're gonna slap $70 on something or any price tag on something and, and promise something, you need to deliver, no excuses. Um, but we can understand the tangibles. We can understand the lack of resources. We can understand the, the, the dire need to meet deadlines and things like that, the pressures that is put on developers under those circumstances. When you're developing mainly for a singular box, and for PCs, and you only offer performance modes on PCs, that is a failure of internal development and an internal mind state altogether. So really this whole thing about Microsoft and Hellblade, I, I, I really was doing them justice even trying to lump the overall arching 30 frames per second problem all together into this. This is a failure a complete failure on Microsoft's side because you look at Sony that has the weaker box and they consistently are putting 60 frames per second modes in their games. Their games look gorgeous, look beautiful as well. And you can sit there and say, but Hellblade is doing this and Hellblade is doing that. Look, that's one game. Explain Starfield to me. Explain uh, Redfall for crying out loud. What is special that's happening in Redfall that required a 30 frames per second mode? You got to look at what's happening at Microsoft. You got to look at the fact that they are trying to double down on quantity uh, versus quality. And then you got to ask yourself for these higher echelon games, even if they are just in a visual aspect, why isn't there the complete uh, concern towards quality all the way around? That's what you're getting when you get a Microsoft product. You're getting a lack of quality. You're getting a lack of Q&A. You're just getting a lack of dedication of care to the consumer all the way around. And to me, that's unacceptable. So yeah, we do have a problem with games all the way around, not being able to, um, you know, stick to the 60 frames per second mode standard. But as Red Tech Gaming here says as well, um, he says Hellblade 2 is 30 frames per second locked on the Xbox Series X and S. PC can run at higher frames per second. Of course, resolution is dynamic on console. Seems developers are going back to the cinematic excuse as the reasoning like we saw on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One. And that's a shame because they sold us on performance. You know, and something else that they said that, that, I, that was telling to me is that, okay, we get it. We get to where well, I'll let, him, I'll let Red, Red Gaming Tech speak to it. It says, if a developer needs to target 30 frames per second due to X reason, that's fine. But just say that. The game is demanding for X reason. Don't say words like cinematic because it's a terrible reason and it actually is, is a farce. Reminds me of the order on PlayStation 4 when we heard the same reason. I think no true words have been spoken. 
So there you have it, folks. This is not good. It's, it's, it's another eye, a brow raising situation for the industry as a whole in, some, in, 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 in a vertical slice. But the bigger picture, 90% of the problem, is just looking at the, 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 the emphasis on quality when it comes to the output over at Xbox. It's one thing to argue about the third party you know woes when it comes to 30 frames per second but this is a first party game you made all these promises with the x even if you are going to distribute games globally on other hardware that still doesn't deny your your responsibility to your consumers you sold them a 500 dollars box where you promised all this power to them if they're going to see this power it should definitively be with your first party games even in the play, even in the worst throws of the PlayStation 3 era, with how difficult the cell processor was to develop for, PlayStation ensured that their exclusive games looked fantastic on that box. They rivaled the 360, even though their third-party games were, you know, an eyesore or, as far as frames and in, in, in other regards. But their first-party games shined on that box, and there's. You know, it, that tells you how low the, the floor is for PlayStation. And when you look at Xbox, it tells you how much lower the floor can get over there with them. Well, that's it. That's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I have to say, check out the links to follow me. They'll lead you to Geeks, Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and MM2K Gaming Network. With all that said, peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.